and okay. It looks like it's uh, it's recording. So yeah, uh, the screen is yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right then. Um, so hello everybody. Welcome to tonight's webinar from the from zero to zero waste hero series. Uh, last week, we had an introductory webinar into the topic of uh, zero waste and sustainability. And today's webinar, it's going to be about uh, waste free kitchen or grocery shopping and cooking. Um, and we will, or I will try to answer the question, how can we minimize waste in the kitchen? And I will divide the webinar into two parts. The first one is um, about grocery shopping and the second will be about cooking. Um, so let's begin, shall we? Um, so starting with grocery shopping, uh, what can we actually reduce? What can we focus on? Well, of course, packaging. Um, because when you do grocery shopping, I guess we've all noticed that there's a lot of packaging, basically everything is now packaged, right? So there's a lot of packaging waste uh, left. Then uh, shopping bags, uh, plastic bottles, and uh, another thing that I always like to mention is uh, useless uh, products. Uh, I will get back to it. I will get uh, to it a little bit later. Um, so I said that we can reduce the packaging. But how? Uh, the easiest option is to is uh, by going to a zero waste or a packaging free store. Uh, depends on how you call it and check. <clears throat> These shops are called uh, Bes Obalovi, which means yeah, like packaging free store. And in these shops, uh, you can actually buy stuff without any packaging. Uh, meaning that you bring your own containers. It can be anything. It can be actually, I don't know, plastic bags that you have at home or the actual glass or plastic jars where you store it uh, or paper bags, whatever. You bring it to the store and you get the products um, uh, into those container containers by yourself. Uh, and uh, this way of shipping has two advantages because uh, first of all, you save the packaging and second, you can get as much as you like. So it also helps with the food waste because you can really get exactly the quantity uh, that you need. Um, these are pictures uh, from some of the packaging free shops. Um, you can see that uh, you can find all the dry goods there from uh, oats, granola, and these like breakfast cereals to pasta, rice, uh, legumes uh, like lentils and beans to everything that's for baking, flour, sugars, baking powder, pudding, and uh, spices, nuts, dried fruits, yeah, I think yeah everything uh, that's dry, even cookies or uh, gummy bears. And um, these are some of the examples. How what can you bring to such store? Uh, some people bring the storage jars, like glass or plastic jars, where they actually store it at home. I myself, since I don't have a car and I always go with the with my baby in the stroller and I don't want to carry too heavy weights, I prefer to go with um, bags. I have um, similar um, cotton bags 
or I also use these um, Ziploc uh, plastic bags from IKEA, which I find really convenient. So I bring those to the store, I get the products, and then at home I transfer it into uh, jars like these. Uh, most of the zero waste stores do not sell only food, uh, but also um, cosmetics and things that go along with the zero waste lifestyle. Uh, so you can actually buy a toothpaste, soaps, shampoos, uh, I even buy a deodorant there. Uh, but we're going to talk about that in, uh, in another webinar about uh, zero waste self-care. Um, it's just to show that uh, most of these shops actually work like a regular supermarket um, but with a zero waste. And I forgot about one thing, you can actually get um, liquids in these shops as well. Uh, you can get oils and vinegars and uh, yeah, things like that. Or uh, tofu, tempeh, cheeses, butter, that they, you have to bring your own box and they just cut a piece uh, in it. Um, so as I, as, I, as I said, there are two advantages. It cuts down the packaging waste and also the food waste. And uh, in Prague, there are quite many of uh, these zero waste stores. Uh, as you can see, most of them are located in Vinohrady because I guess that's where <laughs> these uh, like eco-conscious people are but there are uh, in basically every part of Prague uh, you can see that these stores are one is near Florence in Karlin in Davidson Nusle uh, you can also buy things without packaging in some of the country life's uh, shops um, the one in Letna and the one in Melantrichova in uh, Prague one and I know that there are some other stores all around Prague, in Prague 5 and in Prague 9. You can find them um, on this map. Or you just type in zero waste shops Prague and this map will pop out and you can see, you can find the nearest uh, zero waste store there. Um, right. But um, of course, uh, maybe there's not a zero waste store nearby or you live in a city or village where there is no such store. So let's talk about how can we reduce waste in the supermarket because I guess still most of us have to go to the supermarket uh, from time to time. Um, basically, um, the thing is to try to replace all the single use items by reusable items. Uh, single use items are typically the plastic bags or anything that you throw away after you use it. Um, and uh, the aim is to uh, replace it by something that you can reuse. The most obvious example, and I guess most of us already do it, but I still have to mention it, um, is the plastic bag. Um, I think, and I hope that really no one is uh, getting a new plastic or paper bag in the supermarket every time uh, he or she goes to a store, but uh, you, you bring your own cotton or this net bag or well, any bag that you can reuse. Uh, this is really the easiest thing that you can do and it actually cuts down quite a lot of waste when you think about all the bags that you have saved. And another thing is um, to bring your own uh, produce bags. That means bags for fruits and vegetables or bread. Um, there are many kinds. Uh, me and myself, I prefer the cotton bags, just like on this picture. I already mentioned it in the last webinar that 
the advantage of these cotton bags is that they are really uh, firm and they can carry a lot of weight. So even if you put like two kilos of potatoes in it or something really heavy, they can carry it and they wouldn't go, you know, like ripped apart. Um, so bags and produce bags, really great way to, great and easy way to save packaging. Um, apart from bringing your own bags, uh, there are, there's a couple of tips uh, that you can focus on in the supermarket and that's uh, to avoid unnecessary packaging, uh, especially in the fruits and veggies section. I guess you all know what I mean. <laughs> there are really many types of fruits and vegetables that are unnecessarily packaged because most fruits and vegetables have the peel on, I don't know, like bananas, they have the peel, which is kind of like a packaging, right? That protects the fruit. And so I think it's really unnecessary to wrap it in another plastic uh, packaging, right? I mean, why? Uh, so if, if there is this option, if there is the unpackaged version, um, I would go for that. I know that in the Czech supermarket, some things cannot be found without the packaging. I think like cucumbers, for example, they are always packaged in the plastic. So then it's like, well, that's, that's it's a personal choice. But if there is uh, the option, try to always go for the unpackaged ones. Uh, and of course, uh, during the season, I think the greatest way to shop fruits and vegetables is a farmer's market because there everything is unpackaged and plus it's, uh, it's local, it's often organic and um, it's just the best. <laughs> um, another tip is to avoid useless items. Um, uh, many times we buy things that we don't actually need just because they are in, uh, you know, akce. here in Czech, they are in a special offer, you know, like buy two, get two free, or the price is three crowns cheaper. <laughs> and so we tend to buy more of them. And then we actually don't even eat them, which results in food waste, but also the packaging waste, because we simply bought a completely useless item for us. So just think twice before you buy. Also buy really the stuff that you need and that you know that you will eat it, not things that you see and they look, I don't know, healthy, fancy or something in the store but then you actually have it at home and you're like okay so what i'm gonna do with it you know like i guess we all know these items so think twice before you buy don't go hungry to the supermarkets that's another tip um, don't overstock yourself and try to ignore these special offers um right so these are the tips um for shopping and let's go to the second part of the webinar and that's actual cooking. Um, uh, from roots to stalks means that when you have uh, vegetables and fruits, try to use them the whole thing because many times you don't even know it, but you can actually use like everything from it and um, don't need to throw it away. And um, I hope you're not hungry because I have many pictures of food right now. <laughs> um, here are, here's a couple of my favorite recipes. Um, when I say from roots to stalks, a, a great example is for example, cauliflower. You know that cauliflower has these leaves and I guess most of us, we simply just throw them away, right? But you can actually cut them and uh, bake them in the oven or fry them on a pan with olive oil, garlic, salt and pepper, and they make really nice chips. It's really good. Uh, I think 
I'm not sure if these are kale chips or cauliflower chips, but anyway, you can, you can do that. Or if you buy um, beetroots, like beetroots from the farmer's market with the stalks, with the leaves, you can do this similar thing or use the leaves for a salad. Um, this, or um, yeah, the car I put the carrots there because um, I wanted to mention that uh, when you peel vegetables, carrots or potatoes, if you wash the vegetables well before peeling, then you can use the peels for chips as well. Um, the, the carrot peels and the potato peels, they make really good chips if you fry them in oil. Or another option is to use them for uh, making a stock or vegetable broth. Um, and this picture in the middle is there to show you what can you do with uh, old bread that is maybe too dry and too hard to, to eat, but it's still fine. So you can cut it into pieces and make croutons for to accompany your salad or a soup. So these are my um, tips for like salted um, foods and with uh, sweet foods, um, especially fruits. When you have fruits that are too ripe, like, you know, these bananas that are turning brown or black, um, or fruits that are really turning kind of mushy, you can either make a crumble, which is an absolutely delicious thing, <laughs> and I have to stop talking about it or I'm gonna want to have some, <laughs> or you can uh, uh, make a banana bread, I guess that's um, quite common, or you can uh, freeze them and then uh, uh, make smoothies, because actually the frozen banana is, uh, is great for the smoothie. Um, right, so that's it. You just, just be creative, you know. And um, another tip is um, what, what to do with uh, coffee, coffee grounds. If you have an espresso machine or a mocha or actually a filter, you know that you have this coffee grounds after you make your coffee and you can use them actually too. Uh, I use them to make a peeling or a scrub for my uh, skin and my body. I just mix it with some oil and uh, cinnamon for the fragrance and it's really nice. And I think some people use it for a compost uh, to add to the plants. So um, yeah, just be creative. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the tip. Everything uh, can be used somehow. Um, and my last tip is to plan your meals in advance. I started doing this only recently. I really, I make a plan for the upcoming week and it helps me a lot because it saves me a lot of time uh, that I would spend thinking about what I'm gonna cook. And also uh, I do the shopping uh, online. So when I plan the meals, I do the shopping according to that. And that's really great because I never buy like useless stuff that I wouldn't use afterwards. I really don't buy the, the ingredients for the meals that I have planned. And I have to say that we really have zero food waste at home because yeah, we, we don't buy things like, oh yeah, this is in a special offer and I want this and that. No, we just buy things uh, for the menu <laughs> that we create and, and then we use them all. Uh, so that's it. And uh, yeah, one, one last thing that came to my mind when I was creating the presentation is the topic of uh, composting because uh, you know that the organic waste, like the vegetable peels and all that creates up to 60% of the waste that we, or of the trash that we have at home. And the question is what to do with it. And I've been trying to um, 
have a compost at our flat, but uh, it's uh, meeting some resistance <laughs> here, so still have to fight for it. Um, and it's not it's not so easy, obviously. So um, I just wanted to mention it here that there is this option of uh, composting, although the topic is quite broad, and I, I think it would um, we would need another webinar <laughs> for that. So. Yeah, maybe if you have any questions afterwards, we can discuss it. And uh, that's all from my side. <laughs> and thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, bring them on. Are there any questions? Maybe I can uh, ask yes. one question. Uh, I'm I'm very curious about composting because, uh, for example, yes. my mom <laughs> wanted to try it, but she said it's too smelly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I've been told. <laughs> but I I've been studying it uh, recently because I would really love love to have a compost uh, at home because actually. You know, we, we don't create much waste here and it's just the organic waste that we that we create and it's like, I want to fight it, I want to do something about it. And I found out that there is uh, this type of compost that shouldn't smell because there's a seal and if you close the bin, you can seal it and really no air comes in or out. So they say it doesn't smell mm -hmm. <laughs> and also that there are no flies. But my issue is that I don't know where I would put the compost afterwards <laughs> because we live in a flat. Uh, there is no community garden nearby. You know, I, I simply don't know where, like what would I do with the compost that's created afterwards? We don't have a garden or, or anything. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's my problem, yeah. I think that's uh, that's the major issue that, uh, yeah. for example, for some time I wanted to collect uh, coffee after I drank it, but uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want to throw it on the street or just uh, on the grass right. in the neighborhood. So I exactly, just yeah. it. So I, I know it's a compost, but exactly as you say, I, I would feel bad or weird to just, you know, like toss it in the park. Yeah. Yeah, no, not really. So, yeah, I might fight or try to fight for uh, to have this, uh, like the trash bin, not the black one, but a brown one for organic waste. Because I saw that some buildings have it and you can have it and it's actually quite cheap. Uh, it's been subsidized by the city of Prague. Um, it depends on how the owner of this house. Uh -huh. the idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know that in Prague three, uh, where I live, uh, there are already two or three places mm -hmm. where you can com uh, compost. Yeah, it's like for the for the neighborhood, but mm -hmm. it's not so close to my place, so I don't. It's like not on the way when I'm going for a walk or if I go to work. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a, a bit more problematic to find the way to be there. But I know that, um, I mean, I saw the um, the announcement from the mm -hmm. municipality that they are opening this kind of compost for a community. Yeah, I mean, it's good to see that there are some efforts. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's little by little we're getting there or something's being done about the organic waste, but of course it's still not enough. Hmm. Yeah. Are there any other questions? <laughs> yeah. OK. 
Okay. I think not. In that case, uh, well, we have one more meeting planned for the next week. Yes, and that's the self care. So maybe next week there will be more questions. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> okay. So thank you for today. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, uh -huh. and uh, we will see each other next week. Um, and it will be about self-care and it will be the last part of our urban creatives way, well, minimal waste <laughs> meetings so far. So yeah. Okay. Uh, great. Okay. Yeah, we'll be looking forward. Cool. So have a good evening and, you too. and bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.